Hey everyone, so I've got my new car, so the next thing I need is a new dash cam. One of the things I like to have in my car is a dash cam. Um, it's really useful if you should ever have an accident, but actually as a YouTuber I've also found it really works with the narrative of a story when I do a road trip or something like that. Um, because actually not a lot goes on so you can do a nice time lapse in between the kind of talky bits. So I want a decent dash cam uh, not only because in the past I've had dash cams which have been so poor quality when I have witnessed um, near misses and, and drivers being really stupid on the road um, I haven't actually been able to um, make the number plate out on the vehicle so it would have been useless if I'd have handed it into the authorities anyway. So. Um, not not great. Um, so I wanted a decent dash cam. So um, let's uh, head over to Amazon dash cam. Now, one of the things that I really really hate about places like Amazon now is they're just full of dash cams, and they've all got five star reviews. They are anywhere from 20 to 500 pounds. Uh, it's, it's really silly impossible to uh, look at, at any of these and, and, and tell the difference. I had um, a previous dash cam in my other car, which was an Autovox dash cam, a Chinese brand. Um, and I actually really, really liked that. We have one in the Zoe, um, had it in the Volvo, but it really played up in the Volvo. So I don't know if there was like a production quality issue. So I don't think I'm gonna go for another one of those. So in the end, after much searching, I've settled on this one, uh, which is the Next Base 522GW. Uh, now this camera um, is a UK brand. Um, it uh, has uh, GPS built in and it has a number of other features. Now there is also a kit version of this which is $144.99 but it comes with uh, a hardwire kit and a 64 gig um, S mini SD card. So actually um, the difference, £117 to £144 um, it's not a bad difference to get the officially supported hardware kit and, uh, and, a, and an SD card which is guaranteed to work with the um, device because it's the right speed. So I think I'm going to go with that one. Um, and uh, the hardware kit, the hardware kits aren't what they used to be. So uh, in the old days, you'd actually have to break into the wiring loom of the car. You'd have to um, strip back some insulation on a, on a, on a 12 volt feed. Um, and um, you know, pick up an earth from somewhere. These hardwire kits now um, actually use a piggyback fuse system. So you actually just pull a fuse out of the fuse um, uh, board in the car, and then you replace uh, it with a piggyback fuse, which replaces the original fuse, but also takes off power for the dash cam, which means you don't um, invalidate any warranties you're not messing around with the car it's all completely reversible and I spoke to Octopus Electric Vehicles and they were super happy with this approach um, in fact they recommended this approach to me uh, as the way to have a dash cam installed because clearly um, uh, this kind of modification to a car is in everyone's benefit so um, if there were any accidents insurance claims all of that kind of thing um, hopefully it gets resolved and I'm protected. Um, now, of course, if you do have a dash cam in your car, uh, it will kind of works both ways. So if you do something stupid, then the police can also commandeer the dash cam footage to prosecute you. So, um, you know, think about that. Think about your own driving um, when, you, uh, when you do install one of these dash cams. But the chances are these days that uh, even if you don't have a dash cam, um, and you do do something stupid, then there's plenty of other people on the road now who do have dash cams, so you might as well have one as well. So I'm going to hit the button on that and we'll wait for it to arrive. Right, so dash cams arrived. 
and um, let's do a quick unboxing and see what we've got in the box. Right, let's take a look inside this. Uh, let's see, this is the 522GW bundle. So, we've got the Nextbase dashcam hardwire kit. So, it's got the um, voltage converter in there and uh, the links to the car contents, uh, the power cable, two fuses, uh, one small one standard, and then a standard and a small uh, tap um, that uh, jumpers that particular fuse type, whichever one you need for your car. Um, yeah, that should be good for what we need. Then we've got a case, dash cam carry case. Not sure we'll need that. And then we've got the next base branded 64 gigabytes V30 SD card, a micro SD card with micro SD card to SD card adapter. Get some pieces out of the way for a moment. And get into this. Okay, we have a warning sticker that we can put on the wind window of the car. We have a thank you for purchasing this next space dash cam and a Union Jack. Should we have any difficulties in setup? Right, okay, that's good. Uh, there is a UK uh, support team for this product, which is good. Um, hopefully it means that this isn't going to be a complete nightmare to set up if they've felt the need to put in a uh, a, a warning like that, but we shall see. A quick start guide. And then the dash cam itself. Nice, nicely packaged, nice foam padding as well. This dash cam has a touch screen, charged for two hours with supplied USB for before first use. Use the default settings for best results. Format the SD card fortnightly to free up space. Download the MyNextBase Connect app for full functionality, including emergency SOS services, video editing, and file sharing. Press the red button below to manually protect files. So if you do see something or you do um, have an accident, you can press that button and it will automatically protect the files um, that are uh, required. Then on the front here we have the lens and a, a polarizing uh, a filter um, and obviously a, a little protective cover which can come off now. Interesting polarizer. And then we have the mount cover and magnet. So that's just that's a magnet you can see. Um, and then all of the hardwire kit goes into the actual um, mount for the windscreen rather than the device itself, which means that you can take the device uh, off the screen, remove the SD card more conveniently perhaps, um, which is nice. And then we have this, uh, this cover here. So advertising the app, and then we should have, right, okay, so we've got the, normal cigarette lighter style, 12 volt socket style power supply, which we could use if we didn't want to hardwire it straight away. And then we have the windscreen mount, as you can see with one of these 3M stickers, very sticky stickers, and then it's got a little ball um, there so that you can adjust it to the correct angle for you. And you can see there the um, USB connection uh, where the hardwire kit goes and that is then fed through those terminals there. So if we bring the dash cam back in, we can see how that would work. That's actually crikey, that's, crikey, that's strong. Right, yes, yeah, so that's not gonna go anywhere. You've got the power and SD on that side, and then you've got a 
input for an additional camera on this side. So it can have a, a cabin facing camera and there's also another kit which you can buy or you can buy the camera on its own uh, which is a, a rear view camera so you can you can run that cable through the headlining of the vehicle um, and onto the rear uh, uh, windscreen somewhere but uh, we're, we're not going to do that that's quite a lot of extra work to do properly and then on the bottom you've got a reset uh, on the top as well there's the charger uh, port there if you want to charge it outside the car and what else is in the box so we have the suction cup option so if you don't fancy sticking it to the windscreen you can use this suction cup type option instead i think we shall go with the sticker because i don't want it falling off could be a bit distracting while driving we have a spudger to spudge the wires behind the um, headlining and, um, and just tuck the wire into the headlining. Uh, most cars actually have the, the headlinings at the front that you, you very easily to, to tuck them behind. They're not normally sealed up, so you can normally get wires in there pretty easily. And then finally, it looks like we have a charging cable. Yes, we do. Um, interestingly, it's not... Uh, They've used the old USB uh, connector. Um, you don't see these on, on many um, dash cams these days. They normally the micro USB, but uh, there we go. Let's have a quick look in the hard wire kit. Oh, yes. Some instructions. So here we go, plenty of wire on these. Uh, this is the, um, this is the, come on focus. This is the um, voltage converter. So you can see here, you've got an input of 12 volts or 24 volts. So it can work in a, in a, in a normal vehicle or a, or a commercial vehicle. Um, and we're outputting five volts DC, which is your typical USB output. Um, although um, you've got to be careful because uh, some, things on USB will draw more uh, current than others. So this is, uh, this is a two amp uh, device. So that's that. And we've got lots of, lots of cable. And then this is the magic. This is the magic bit here. So we've got the ferrite ring and then we've got two depending on the fuses in your fuse board. Um, the chances are you'll probably have both types of fuse in your car's fuse board, but um, you may not have a, uh, a switch live um, on the one that you want. So you've got, you've got the choice of either. So you need to find a switch live and then uh, plug into that. Um, I suppose you could have a permanent live, but then you have the risk of running your car battery out and filling up the SD. Um, so I would wire it into a, a, uh, a switch live so when your car comes on, the dash comes on as well. And then you've got the two fuses which need to go into that side, like that, for the different types. So that's a two amp fuse, they're both two amp fuses. So they're not expecting any more current to be drawn than two amps out of this. Um, and then the other fuse that you take out of the of the, the fuse box goes in there. So essentially, the fuse is replaced. The fuse that is being replaced goes into the first socket, and then that continues to operate whatever circuitry is being operated. And then this piggybacks a little bit of power off there and down here, and then is protected by that fuse. Um, there's no earth in in this line because the fuses are only dealing with power and positive so this then you need to pick up somewhere uh, else on the car so you can normally find a piece of exposed metal or some sort of screw bolt something behind the dashboard um, which you can just unscrew chuck that underneath and then tighten back up 
Um, uh, sometimes you're even lucky and you'll find there's an actual earth connection somewhere on the fuse board, but it really depends on the car. So that's it. Let's have a look at the quick start guide. Uh, as you can see, the first step, uh, it's very neatly laid out. You can see already this is something a little bit more than your average uh, Chinese uh, dash cam. Uh, quite a bit more thought has gone into these instructions than most. Um, so you put the SD card in, take the cover off, um, work out what you're doing with your mounting. If you've got the hardwired kit, plug it into there, route it around. Uh, into your, uh, well, either hardwire it or into your 12 volt adapter port. Um, uh, plug in your window mount, make sure it's all nice and level, and then uh, peel it back, stick it to the windscreen. Again, level it vertically, turn it on, select your language, and then you can protect your videos by pressing that button. That's really the only button you want on a dash cam. And uh, then this optional ability to uh, glue the uh, mounting to a suction cup. That's a very convoluted way of, of doing that. Um, but I don't think we'll be doing that. QR code to download the appropriate app for iPhone and Android. This dash cam also works with Alexa. Um, which is interesting. Not sure that that's. Uh... Sorry, I don't know that. <laughs> and of course, we have one in this room. And uh, that is about it. So I think we shall go and wire this in when it stops raining. And it actually comes on. So we can now bring that a little bit closer. Set the language, English. First time installation. Everything. Okay. Okay. Okay, so we're just gonna say we're in Europe. Don't you know we're not in Europe anymore? Okay. UK and Ireland, miles per hour. Dash cam will automatically set the time and date within satellite signals received. So this is one of the reasons I went for a GPS based um, dash cam because you don't have to worry about the time and date being incorrect, which can be tricky if this was being used as evidence. So um, you really want the time and the date to be uh, accurate. Otherwise you can get into all sorts of uh, inadmissible evidence type situations. So. The dash cam will, as well as receiving GPS, obviously GPS work by timing um, things. So the date and time is uh, something that is sent down via the GPS signal as well. Okay, um, app features to enable Alexa, emergency SOS, your dash cam needs to be linked to your phone. I think we'll skip that for now. Dash cam setup is complete. Okay. We didn't set the SD card. Ah, you see, we missed the trick already. We didn't actually follow the instructions. But there you go. That's the dash cam. We'll leave that to charge for a couple of hours, as it says in the manual, and we shall come back a bit later. Right, so let's get this thing installed already. So once we've found a position for the dash cam, all we need to do is wire it in. Now, this isn't my car, so we need to do it in a non-destructive way. All these panels that I'm taking off are obviously designed to come off. Behind here is the fuse board. And what we can just do is we can use our piggyback fuse system to install this so that we can take it out anytime. We need to identify the right fuse. That 20 amp in my car, I know, is a switched live, which means it comes on when the car is switched on. So my dash cam isn't gonna run in all the time. Let's pull some bits and pieces off so that we can get the wiring run. These are just door seals and little trim pieces, which are all designed to come out. Then in some cars, this trim just pops off. Others have retaining screws behind little uh, blanks, but you know this one just came off. Um, we need to just check the wiring um, is when we're installing it isn't going to foul on anything when we all put it back together. The headlinings are really easy. It literally just pushes behind. You don't really even need to use this tool. It just makes sure that it's right up in there. 
and then once that's in there we can just route it into the dash cam. I really like the installation here because we can in install it into the base of the dash cam, not into the dash cam itself, which means we can take the dash cam off there if we need to change the SD card. Now we've got all the wiring back to the fuse board, um, we can see that the uh, we just take the we just need to take the fuse out um, and replace it with the piggyback fuse system. So uh, this little 20 amp fuse isn't itself actually able to go into the uh, fuse uh, piggyback fuse system because it's a slightly different type, um, but we can just use a different type of 20 amp fuse to do the same job. Now we're going to pop that in and then we can get on with the wiring. Now this little piggyback fuse system, I could have actually uh, soldered it up, um, but because I didn't know how long the wiring was, I just chose to continue and, and use the uh, bullet type connectors. Nothing wrong with these connectors as long as they're uh, installed correctly and insulated well. So now we're just gonna strip down the cables, make them a bit shorter. The earth doesn't need to go far. There's a little piece of metal you can just about see underneath all that plastic, which has a screw in it. And we shall use that to earth this installation. We're just gonna put a little insulated connector on and that will allow us to fit this underneath the screw that is in place within the vehicle. Now moving on to the mains feed, so we're gonna to have to put a little bullet connector on here so that we can install it into the piggyback fuse holders connector. So again, we're just gonna shorten the cabling here. There's a huge amount of cabling because they don't know what sort of car you're gonna have, so they give you a lot. We're just gonna shorten this down to make the installation nice and neat. There's nothing worse than opening up a fuse box like this and finding a, a, there's a, like an absolute rat's nest of wiring behind here. Plus you'll get all sorts of problems with the wiring knocking around and uh, you'll hear it when you're driving on a long journey and you'll wonder where the heck that sound's coming from. Um, so it is really worthwhile shortening these wires so that you don't get any kind of rattles or knocks associated with this kind of installation. Now the next thing to do is just secure this 12 volt converter. This is so that the dash cam runs on five volts, so it converts it down to uh, five volts from the car's 12 volts. Now this thing as well can bang around um, and really annoy you when you're on the road. So just a little bit of double-sided tape adhered to part of the car inside the dash will make all the difference to the installation. It's something that you'll only hear when you're on a really long journey and then it will be too late. So I'd recommend as soon as you get one of these things, definitely find a nice location to secure that down with a bit of double-sided tape so that it doesn't annoy the hell out of you. So now that's all done, we're just gonna screw in the earth terminal and then all we need to do from then on is just to tidy up the remaining cables so that there's no chance of them moving around when the car is bumping along the road. Now to do this, I like to use this fabric cloth tape. This is much better than electrical tape because it does not sweat and it does not come unstuck. This is in fact what the OEMs use to wrap their wiring looms and it is really, really good stuff. Um, it sticks to itself really well and it sticks to other things really well too. Uh, I'm just going to wrap it around some of this plastic here so that we can uninstall it when we need to, but it will stay nice and secure and again won't rattle around when we're driving. So with all that done, all we need to do now is click back in our bits and pieces, um, all of the trim that we've taken out and the seals that we've moved, and then we are done. The great thing about this installation is when I come to give this car back, I can remove all of this that I've done here and there will be no lasting damage to the car. No wiring harnesses were harmed in the installation of this product, which is fantastic. So all that remains to do is spend a bit of time with this dash cam and see how it gets on and then I'll do an update video in the future and we can get some feedback on exactly how good or bad this dash cam has been. And we shall see you in the next one. Oh, damn it. I suppose you always have a bit left over when you do a bit of DIY.